A Ukrainian drone attack on the Russian fleet in the Caspian Sea demonstrates that Ukraine is capable of striking regions in Russia that were previously considered safe, the British Ministry of Defense writes, citing intelligence data. It is recalled that on November the 6th, Ukraine launched a drone strike on the port of Kaspisk in Russia, where several Russian Navy ships were located. It is noted that at least two Gepard-class frigates were damaged. The extent of the damage is currently unknown, but any damage to the ships is likely to be quickly repaired, British intelligence believes. The report emphasizes that the Caspian fleet was most likely used for massive attacks on Ukraine in 2022 and continued to be used for attacks in 2023 to 2024. Ukraine probably attacked the Caspian flotilla in response to these strikes on its territory, the intelligence service notes. At the same time, the British Ministry of Defense emphasizes that this attack demonstrates Ukraine's ability to strike Russian targets in areas that were previously considered safe. Before the strike, the Ukrainian UAV covered a large area of Russian territory without being intercepted. This will obviously cause concern among the Russian political and military leadership, the intelligence service noted. Recall on November the 6th, the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine conducted a special operation which resulted in a successful attack on the Russian flotilla in the Caspian Sea. As a result of UAV strikes, at least two objects in Kaspisk were damaged, the missile ships Tatarstan and Dagestan. As build tabloid analyst Julian Robka noted, the attack on the Caspian flotilla coincided with the US presidential election day. According to Robka, this could also be a demonstration of force by Kiev, for which the military base on the Caspian is a legitimate target. He emphasizes that, for the first time since the beginning of the full-scale invasion of the Russian Federation, the Ukrainian armed forces struck a Russian flotilla based in the Caspian Sea. According to preliminary data, several ships of the Russian Federation were damaged in the port of Kaspisk. Rubka insists that the Caspian flotilla, which is more than a thousand kilometers from the launch site of the attack drones, is a legitimate target for the Ukrainian armed forces. We have a lot of weapons made from Russian drones and rockets. I will not speak in numbers, but a lot of what flew to us returned to them. Seriy Biskresnov is a Ukrainian electronics expert and more widely known as Flash said this. According to this practice, of our of attack of Russia inaudible into Ukraine. They usually, first of all, launch Shahid, and after a couple of hours they are trying to attack us with missiles. So, the reason, first of all decrease the quantity of our missile and missile of air defense and after attack us with ballistic and cruise missile, he adds. In this case, an associated press investigation has found that a high-tech factory in central Russia is creating deadly thermobaric drones which are highly destructive. They work by creating a vortex of high pressure and heat that can penetrate thick walls. They suck out all the oxygen in their path, and have a fearsome reputation because of the injuries inflicted even outside the initial blast site. These include collapsed lungs, crushed eyeballs, and brain damage. But the Russians have another secret weapon. It involves launching a small number of highly destructive thermobaric drones surrounded by huge swarms of cheap foam decoys. Russia came up with the plan in late 2022 and codenamed it Operation False Target. Engineers are manufacturing hundreds of decoy drones that are designed to overwhelm Ukrainian defenses as they try to protect against the new weapon, AP's investigation found. It is intended to force Ukraine to expend scarce resources to save lives and preserve critical infrastructure, including using expensive air defense munitions, according to a person familiar with Russia's production and a Ukrainian source. Neither radar, sharpshooters or even electronics experts can tell which drones are deadly in the skies. AP's investigation reveals that unarmed decoys now make up more than half the drones targeting Ukraine and as much as 75% of the new drones coming out of the factory in Russia's Alabuga Special Economic Zone. The information came from a person familiar with Russia's production, who spoke on condition of anonymity because the industry is highly sensitive, and a Ukrainian electronics expert. The same factory produces the particularly deadly variant of the Shahid unmanned aircraft armed with thermobaric warheads, the person said. In October, Moscow attacked with at least 1,889 drones 80% more than in August, 
according to an Associated Press analysis which tracked the drones for months. During the first weekend of November, the Kiev region spent 20 hours under air alert, and the sound of buzzing drones mingled with the boom of air defenses and rifle shots. On Saturday, Russia launched 145 drones across Ukraine, just days after the re-election of Donald Trump threw into doubt U.S. Support for the country Since summer, most drones crash, are shot down or are diverted by electronic jamming, according to an AP analysis of the Ukrainian military briefings. Less than 6% hit a discernible target, according to the data since the end of July. But the sheer numbers mean a handful can slip through every day, and that is enough to be deadly. Russia and Iran signed a $1.7 billion deal for the Shahids in 2022, after President Vladimir Putin invaded neighboring Ukraine, and Moscow began using Iranian imports of the unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, in battle later that year. Soon after the deal was signed, production started in Alabuga. Seriai Biskrestnov explained that the thermobarics were first used over the summer and estimated they now make up between 3% and 5% of all drones. For Russia, the benefits are huge.